Hey Southwest, welcome back to Wolf Bite. I'm Katie Pittman. And I'm Sam Elam. And as our school year comes to a close, we have one last show to share with you. Coming up, learn about one issue affecting Southwest. See if any of your fellow students can bake. And meet one senior athlete. All this and more in the May edition of Wolf Bite TV. As we near the end of the school year, it's almost time to say goodbye to some of the people that we see every day. In addition to saying goodbye to the class of 2022, we may also be seeing the last of some of our favorite teachers. Let's see why some teachers here at Southwest and nationwide are leaving the profession. I have seen more teachers leave the profession in the last two years than I've ever seen, and it's a major concern for me, I'll be honest with you. In the past few years, a large number of teachers from around the country are beginning to see their profession in a new way. In Blue Valley specifically, we've seen new teachers and permanent substitutes take over classes, and veteran teachers have left their jobs after years of being in the field. Topics such as lack of support, student motivation, and notoriously low salaries are a few of the most prominent issues facing teachers right now. Students are getting more and more accustomed to instant gratification. I think kids having access to all of the social media at the tip of their fingers has really changed the way that teachers are able to react or, or interact with students. For example, according to Indeed, the average BVSD substitute teacher daily pay is approximately $214, which is 93% above the national average. And when compared to Indeed's posting of $13.68 per hour for a high school teacher, permanent subs are making an average of $15.84 more than a regular teacher per workday during the school year. You know, teachers are professionals, and I think that, that somewhere along the lines, people kind of lost faith in that. Being a teacher was something to be really proud of. I think some teachers were thinking, what. Well, I'm working really hard, this is a challenging job, but I'm not really sure that, that I'm appreciated. One teacher said in a recent survey, the district does not behave as if it is willing to dedicate the resources we need to help students adequately and continues to obsess over student achievement at the cost of student wellness. But even if I didn't have grading, even if I didn't have to make that test, even if I didn't have to plan tomorrow's lesson, I would still be thinking about the kid who I know has to go work tonight until 11. I'm thinking about that kid who just can't get their homework done because their home life is terrible. It takes a part of your soul. If I weren't moving, I don't see myself leaving Southwest because of the community that all of the students have created and the community that administration has created. and. I just, I love it here. This is like my home. Others are concerned about school policies, such as one made by Kansas legislator titled the Parents' Bill of Rights in Education, allowing for parents to sue individual teachers for up to $15,000 for teaching topics that they do not agree with, such as slavery or other historical happenings. In the same survey, teachers were asked to rank their overall satisfaction with the profession in the last year, and the average rank out of 10? 5.7. I can't tell you how, I mean, big, big concern of mine. Reporting for Wolf Bite TV, this is Sam Suarez. What's up, Southwest? I'm Sam Suarez. Firstly, Southwest has announced that we will be getting a new principal next year. Dr. Alexander is taking over for Mr. Roberts' position, who is going up to district office. We are so excited to see what Dr. Alexander has in store for the Southwest community. Next up, our theater department has finished the year strong with She Kills Monsters, directed by Blake Alley. They've had some great shows this semester, such as Footloose and Songs for a New World. So a big congratulations to everyone involved. Lastly, our swim and dive team has had a great season, with tons of athletes qualifying for state and breaking tons of personal records. Now back to Katie and Sam to see what the rest of the show has in store. We are so proud of all your hard work and accomplishments, but I think we need to test the skills of our T-Wolves one last time. Well, Katie, you're in luck. 
Up next is some Southwest students and seeing how they do in Cupcake Wars. In just a few moments, these four bakers will enter a competition for cupcake supremacy. They will be judged on taste, presentation, and creativity. The winner will get to keep their dignity, while the loser will not. Get ready to rock, because this is Cupcake Wars. No, it's just like an actual margarita drink. So do we want to add green? This is some Vincent Van Gogh. Pretty great, pretty great. We're thinking this hot girl summer, you know what I mean? That was good. Dude, that swirl is good. Never mind, don't look at that. <laughs> You're overcomplicated. You should just I actually psych, I lied. Look at that. Cupcakes. God. Today we have an, an exquisite uh, Kamaleo. There's a hair on this one. No, hey, hey now. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I'm so scared. Yeah, no, no, cheers. I'm not worried about this. I'm gonna have to go with a four for the presentation. Taste is a nine. Wow. Wow. That's big. <laughs> Okay, la francais. En francais. En francais. <laughs> Alrighty, chefs, on your around. left, you have a sandy beach complemented with a very happy looking sun just enjoying its life under the umbrella. He's a little scary. He looks like, um, Lisa Simpson. <laughs> Ouch. Thank you, chef. Cheers. Cheers. To the United States. Taste. Oh, this yeah. Tastes good. The presentation, it is nicely done though, so I'll, I'll give it, <laughs> yeah. I'll give it a five. Minus seven. What? Yes. What? A seven, not oh. negative seven. I'm taking a bite out of this one. You do <gasps> Nolan and Sterling Incorporated. Your final points was 108. 108. For en français, oh, for your me. final score was 108. Here, we're going to leave it as a tie. No! Oh. But wow. it is up for you guys to decide. <laughs> no! Scan the QR there code. There will be right a here. QR code for you to scan. Scan it and vote and we will announce it vote later. Us. Okay, and that's another vote for Nolan and Sterling. Excuse me? Are we filming? Yeah. Um, anyways, let's head over to Spencer for 10 second trivia. Hey Southwest, I'm Spencer Tomasco and welcome back to another edition of 10 Second Trivia. Here we give you three questions and you have 10 seconds to answer them each. Let's go. First up, which mountain range is home to Mount Everest? The Alps, the Himalayas, the Andes, or the Rockies? Mount Everest sits in the Himalayan mountains between Nepal and Tibet. Next up, which type of nut is marzipan made out of? Hazelnut, cashew, almond, or walnut? Marzipan is made out of almonds. Finally, how many women served as nurses during the Vietnam War? 11,000, 17,000, 8,000, or 23,000? There were approximately 11,000 women who served as nurses. For this question, let's see how you compare it with our Instagram followers. We asked them this same question and over 37% of our followers answered correctly. And a special shout out to Luke Davis for being the first to answer correctly in our poll. To participate in future activities like this, follow us on all of our social media at BVSW Wolfbite. Now back to you, Katie and Sam. It's so interesting to see how many women served, and it's amazing that some of them are still here to tell their stories today. Now, let's meet one Vietnam War nurse and learn how serving changed her life. The middle is the mess hall where we ate things like powdered 
This Vietnam War veteran may be a familiar face for U.S. history students here at Southwest. After graduating from nursing school in 1968, Lou Eisenbrandt received a letter that would change her life forever. It's interesting because, as I recall, my orders came with a note that said, congratulations, you're going to Vietnam, and seemed a little odd because I'm not sure everybody got terribly excited about going to Vietnam. Um, going to a war zone is not something you get thrilled about. In November of 1969, she landed in South Vietnam and began serving in the 91st Evacuation Hospital, where she treated wounds and illnesses that weren't war-related. And after three months, I was asked by the chief nurse if I would like to move to the emergency room. So for the remaining time, eight and a half months, I worked in the emergency room where we got guys directly from the field. And I pretty much saw everything there. I learned to do a lot of nursing in a short period of time. 30 years after her time in Vietnam, Lou learned of another toll that serving took on her body. I was diagnosed uh, 20 years ago with Parkinson's, um, which was a total surprise. But I went back to thinking when I was diagnosed um, that the neuro neurologist at the time said to me, you know, it, you could be exposed to chemicals. Lou was able to learn that her case of the neurodegenerative disease was caused by exposure to Agent Orange, a herbicide used during the war in Vietnam. Nevertheless, Lou had to lean on the people who mean the most to her. I remember when I was first diagnosed and I just thought, you know, this was the end of the world. I didn't think I'd live to see my children married and all this stuff. Family is so important, and especially when you're diagnosed with something like Parkinson's. That um, support makes a huge difference. Lou has also published two books. The first, titled Vietnam Nurse, Mending and Remembering, is a memoir about her time in Vietnam. Then I started thinking about living with Parkinson's for 20 years because not many people live that long with Parkinson's. I thought maybe just by sharing my story, I could um, help somebody else who say, oh, well, if she had that, then maybe I'm, I'm okay, I'm all right. Lou just recently published her second book, Unsteady As She Goes, Battling Parkinson's After Vietnam. If you are interested in reading either of her books, you can find them on Amazon. Reporting for Wolf Bite TV, this has been Katie Pittman. Lou is an incredible person and we thank her so much for her service. We absolutely do. Now let's head over to Riley to hear what's been going on with sports here at Southwest. What's up Southwest? I'm Riley Underwood and I'm a sports. The spring sports season has been going great so far. The softball team is 12-2 and, and the baseball team is 8-2 and, and the boys tennis and track and field teams have been doing great as well. Our track and field team has been setting a lot of new PRs and Caden Hacker even broke the school javelin record throwing over 176 feet. Great job to all our teams and congratulations to all the seniors signing as well. And we look forward to a lot of deep postseason runs this year. Back to you guys. Thanks, Riley. The class of 2022 has had some amazing athletes and we can't wait to see their final games. Before they go though, let's learn a little bit more about one athlete who's paved the way for girls wrestlers here at Southwest. It was the first year that girls wrestling was offered and I thought about it. I talked to all my coaches. I finally decided, you know what, I might as well give it a shot. Soon after joining the girls wrestling team, Hannah found something she is truly passionate about. I just love working hard. You know, I show up and I work. It's blood, sweat, and tears every single day. Putting in the hard work finally paid off when Hannah won the state title for her weight class, making her the first girl in Blue Valley history to do so. I was overjoyed. It's like three years of hard work finally builds up to that moment. And that just felt amazing. You know, it's that I am capable of so much more than I ever thought I would have been. Throughout her time wrestling, Hannah has learned perseverance. You are going to be terrified at first, but you just have to find some joy within it. Celebrate the little victories. If you say, I'll just quit tomorrow, and then that day comes and you don't quit, and you say, I'll just quit tomorrow, sooner rather than later, you'll figure out you made it through the whole season, and then you're going to say, oh, that was kind of fun. I want to do it again. And you just stick with it. Hannah's journey goes to show that hard work truly does pay off. I just wanted to prove to everyone that they can do it. I want them to know that when they put in the work and when they put their mind into it, that anything is possible. 
Reporting for Wolf Bite TV, this has been Ava Williams. Hannah's done some amazing things for our wrestling team here at Southwest. Now let's head over to Libby to learn some more about the news and trends in the world around us. Thank you, Sam and Katie. Welcome to What's Trending, where we talk about the latest news and trends in the world around us. I'm your host, Libby Davis. First, let's talk about a game that has been added to everyone's daily routine. Wordle is a popular game that allows players up to six chances to guess the new daily word. Players' minds have recently been put up to the test with words like larva, inept, and zesty. Next up, Coachella just hosted its first festival since the 2019 pandemic. The festival attracted over 150,000 people to Indio, California, with artists such as Billie Eilish, Harry Styles, in the weekend being listed as headliners. And finally, for some more local news, on April 28th, Blue Valley School Board member Jim McCohen was stripped of his vice presidential title in a 5-2 vote from the other school board members. This vote came after Blue Valley for All organization receiving over 3,000 signatures to censure and remove him. McMullen has been receiving backlash after various critical tweets regarding gender identity and LGBTQ issues. Now let's head back to Katie and Sam. Thank you, Libby, for updating us on all the latest trends. Now, let's see what happens when some Southwest students react to Ask Reddit posts. I don't feel safe. I'm an adult. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably doing for the biggest. Okay. Um, so I, I took way too many vitamins um, one time, and <laughs> no, Miles, it was like I was like in space, like I was floating. <laughs> That's called an acid trip. <laughs> the door like flew open, and we just looked at each other, and like the drawers opened in my house by themselves. Oh, I asked where Indy was, like as in Indiana. I asked uh, Reagan Cannon one time when the 4th of July was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know the um, continents very well, so Europe and like Russia. Okay, that's my issue. That's my issue. <laughs> like a giant plate of like like the worst quality steak possible, and cook it all the way through, completely 100% gray, with no salt. No pepper, no spices, no tenderizer, nothing. Pickled eel with cranberry sauce. That's when, very specific. When have you ever had that? Where'd you get that from? Cod, yes, cod, because I have a very traumatic experience with that. Um, my mom actually like force fed it to me. I How would feed that him. torment Gordon Ramsay? Maybe he doesn't like cod, I don't know. Um, I would feed him burnt oranges. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> As you could tell, we are very ready for summer here at Wolf Bite. But we do have to finish this one last show. Thank you so much for tuning in and be sure to follow us on all social media at BVSW Wolf Bite. See you next year, T Wolves. Bye.